welcome back. Well, you're still tuned into Health Matters on the Medicine Box on CNBC TV 18. We have Dr. David Chandy discussing diabetes with us. And this is our rapid fire segment where we have a lot of questions coming to us from viewers and people who do suffer from diabetes or have somebody in their family suffering from that uh, and basic questions which they want answers to. So the first question, Dr. Chandy, is, is type 2 diabetes reversible with only lifestyle changes? Yes, but there's an important catch to it. It has to be in someone who's obese because only if there's a weight loss will the diabetes reverse and it should occur in the first few years of diabetes when the pancreas is still fresh. If the pancreas is tired and it's been more than 5 to 10 years, it's unlikely that the diabetes would reverse. So a recent onset diabetes in an obese person, the answer is yes. Okay, will all obese people get diabetes? No. So obese people, some of them luckily have good genes. Even if they are obese throughout their life, they may not get. But a majority of them have a high risk for diabetes. Okay. Is long-term use of liraglutide safe for diabetes management? Yes. So this is a new drug studied well for the last 10 to 15 years. So it is safe in the long run. Okay. Any common misconceptions about diabetes? So a couple of misconceptions are very common. One is like, you know, what is an ideal diet? So there are lots of things on internet, on Facebook. But the most common thing to remember is a balanced, simple diet is the best. You need to have something that is sustainable. So that is the most important misconception. The second is exercise. Many people say that A, exercise is good, cycling is good or swimming is good. So the thing is, whatever you enjoy, that is going to be sustainable. So do something that you enjoy that brings a smile on your face and do it for the next 30, 40 years of your life. That will be the best thing. Okay. Alcohol and tobacco, its relation to diabetes. Yes, so two important things. Alcohol increases your visceral fat. And we spoke earlier that if your visceral fat or your belly fat increases, your sugar control will be poor. Now, smoking has an interesting relationship. In diabetes, like I mentioned, that the blood flow to the leg reduces and smoking troubles this further. So it is seen very commonly that in smokers who have high sugars, they develop leg wound that don't heal and they need amputation for gangrene. So if there's any smokers, it's important that if they're detected to have diabetes, they need to stop smoking immediately. Otherwise, they have a high risk of gangrene. Okay. Common signs uh, of being pre-diabetic or diabetic and what should you, when should you get checked? Yes. So like we mentioned, pre-diabetic is a silent condition. Mm. In some people, you'll see a back color discoloration yeah. behind the neck. In diabetic, in the initial phases, it will be quiet. But when it advances and when the sugars are very high, one symptom would be passing a lot of urine. And in olden time, the word for diabetes comes from, you know, passing too much of urine. That's the actual meaning of the word diabetes. Okay. So anyone whom you see passing urine frequently, you should think of diabetes. Second is if a person comes out from the bathroom and says that there's a lot of ants running towards the bathroom, that means the urine has more sugar. So that was an old symptom that, you know, people would check for, you know, diabetes. The other symptoms are weight loss because you are losing calories. Mm. Uh, the other symptom is hunger. So the, and the last symptom would be increased risk for infection. So if someone is having increased hunger, increased thirst, lot of urine and skin infection, check for diabetes. Okay. And lastly, what are the other strategies that can help control diabetes besides just exercise and diet? Discipline in taking medicines and discipline in monitoring your sugars. Many people like, you know, think things are good and then they forget, you know, to check their sugars for months and then they land up with complications. So every day I see two, three of such patients. They did well for the initial few months and then they go to a comfort zone and they go within their shell and they stop monitoring and stop meeting their doctor. And then they land up with a complication like a kidney infection or a wound in their leg and then they regret. So even if you're doing good, please don't forget to monitor your sugars. Okay, and can you live a successful, happy life with diabetes? Absolutely. Mm. Be it type 1 diabetes with insulin or type 2 diabetes with your lifestyle and medicines, you can absolutely live a help, healthy, happy life. Okay, all right, Dr. Chandi, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure for uh, giving us so much knowledge on diabetes and busting a lot of myths as well. Thank you very much for joining in. Thank you.